We bought this 20 year old coach one year ago. Would we do it again? Watch and find out. First anniversary of owning Rosie. Was it a good idea? We'll, we'll go into that in this video. <laughs> so it was a year ago that we started um, getting ready to renovate our house and started watching YouTube and instead we bought a 20 year old motorhome. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna let you know on this episode what we think of that idea. If you've been watching our videos from the beginning you know that Rosie when we bought her was in really good condition. I mean the, the people that had her before took pretty good care of her. Um, the only thing that was wrong, and which I said in the very first video that we did starting this channel, was it was pretty much outdated. The, all the interior was from the late 90s, early 2000, 2001. Jamie, and I'm here in our new motorhome, well, new to us motorhome. We recently purchased this about four months ago, and it's a 2001 Holiday Rambler Ambassador. She's a diesel pusher, 36 foot long, and if you, I'm going to scan around here so you can see her, along with my beautiful wife, Linda. Um, a little bit outdated. It's got that 99 2001 interior. What we're going to do is we're going to completely remodel this. Um, we budgeted out for that. We started trying to decide um, what we wanted to do, what style we liked, and also figuring out what type of camping was going to be best for us. But then, right off the bat, we got hit with a whole bunch of unexpected expenses. Make sure and watch to the end because what we're going to do is we're going to go over all the expenses that we've put into Rosie in the first year. So we're going to let you know uh, up to this point everything that we've put into it and all the expenses. Both what we um, planned to do and what we didn't plan to do. The expenses that we didn't plan on uh, right out the gate were Rosie needed a new radiator. Um, apparently the gentleman that owned her before um, basically epoxied the radiator. Um, he had some service work done, basically it looks like what he did was he epo epo epoxied it um, to seal a leak. I ended up uh, through a couple of connections hooking up with a place called Dynamic Diesel in Phoenix. They took the radiator out, put a brand new radiator in and then installed it. We had some other work, a couple of things done since they had the radi radiator out, uh, which kind of made sense. But that ended up being five grand for having to put in the new radiator and have all that done. So that was one thing that we just right didn't off. plan on right yeah. off the gate. Uh, when we had the inspection done, they told us that the the uh, toilet, the seal was not holding water. So we knew going into it, we were going to have to replace the, the toilet. And I Another expense somehow we didn't really notice. Well, I kind of think the inspector we had did tell us, but for some reason, it was advertised as having all new tires? Well, the advertisement said that it had uh, six brand new tires. And when the inspection was done, they found out it had five. Yeah, it was How it ended up with five, I have no idea. And they kind of hid that on the inside, right? Well, no, it was... It was, it was right out there, okay. It was right in the front. That was another thing that we had to... Uh, and it didn't have a spare. It did not have a spare, so what we ended up doing was we bought two brand new tires, put them in the front, and took the one that was still good, that wasn't out of date, and we have that in storage for a spare should we get a flat tire or anything. So, uh, Jamie called me and said, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get two new tires, and I'm thinking, tires, oh, maybe $200 a piece because it's a big RV, but two tires was how much? $750. Yeah, so sticker shock. <laughs> Things with an RV cost a lot more. So we knew the batteries that came with the coach were older and eventually we'd want to replace them. We just didn't realize how bad they were. Initially I was going to do AGM batteries and then we opted not to do that and ended up going with lithium. So, <laughs> so that was about $1,500 and we still feel that was money wisely spent. But now we have to make the investment for all the rest of it in order to get those new batteries up and running. Well, pros and cons of if we would choose this same rig again, what's a negative on it? Um, well, this rig, when you when you initially when it came out, there was a couple of different engine options. 
Um, whoever bought this one didn't opt to do the larger engine. Um, if we're driving on flat, it'll go 75, 80, 80 miles an hour, not a problem. You don't ever do that. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's not true. I mean, going to Tucson, the, the speed limit is 75, okay. so I do do 75 <laughs> going down there. But um, there's a couple of, when like coming up here to Camp Verde, where we're at today. Or Flagstaff or the Grand Canyon, any trips up a steep, long grade. Right. You get into some steeper grades and it'll, it'll get down to um, 35 miles an hour, uh, like on 6% grades, which is kind of, you know... I know that motorhomes don't go, they're not, they don't have big engines like big rigs and stuff, but, um, and Rosie's a heavy, a heavy rig, I think she's 20 something thousand pounds, so you're push, you're trying to push a lot up a hill, and I understand that, but if you had a little bit, the bigger engine, I think this is 300, and I think the next step up was a 330 horsepower, I think that extra horsepower would have given us a little bit more going up the hills, and that's the only one regret. Uh, as far as the engine size, but other than that, I mean, driving Rosie is great. She's no issues, and it's a really easy coach to drive, but that was the one thing would be if I wish it had the larger engine. Now, here's some of the things that we really enjoy about Rosie. There's a lot of storage, and we thought we... Inside we'd... and outside. Yeah, and with keeping in mind that we thought we might end up going full-time, Remember, this started as a house renovation, and thanks to YouTube, ended up with, we're gonna live in an RV. <laughs> so, storage was a big thing going into it. What else do we like about it? Whenever I'm driving through the RV park, I always look, and I'm, boy, she's a real pretty motorhome. Um, when she's opened up with the slides, and all the awnings that go over the windows are out, it's, she's a really pretty motorhome. I really... Very uh, classic. Yeah, I really like her. And we've got a really nice bathroom set up. We have the split bathroom. And um, we got a really big shower, which isn't something that you find in every motorhome, especially older ones. Yeah. So we thought we'd come inside and talk about the renovations, where we're at and where we're going, what's still to be done, and how we like our comfy chairs. <laughs> yeah, we got pretty much the front half done now. We got all the cabinets painted. We did the valances. We need um, lights. We do need to get the lights. Last big thing we did is we changed out the jackknife sofa and put in the new uh, recliner chairs. From Rec Pro. From Rec Pro. And those are working out really well. Oh, the cabinets are so pretty. I love how they turned out. Um, they just look so new and modern. And all we did was paint them, basically. Except for the front ones, which you rebuilt. It's been a lot of manual labor, has been most of it. Other than the chairs, um, pretty much everything else you made by hand. Yeah, the shiplap the TV cabinet and the recliners here were kind of the biggest, um, the biggest, biggest expense. projects oh, and basic. biggest expense. Yeah. The last things left in the main cabin, um, like we said, the lights and, um, the curtains, we've got really hideous, embarrassing, uh, curtains for the front windows and stuff. The cabinets up front go straight across the front of the motor home. So I could mount a, a, a large shade across the front and then two shades, on the sides and I think that would work out pretty well. So I think that's uh, what we're gonna opt to do. The refrigerator we're gonna replace with a small apartment, residential refrigerator. Yeah, like a 10 or 11 cubic foot refrigerator, which compared to the one that we have, would probably give us double the space that we currently in have. In the bedroom, we started painting in the bathroom. Of course, we built, put in the new sink. We did it. We put in the yeah, new we sink did and faucet. It. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do the, it wasn't me who did the countertop and mounted the sink and mm. the faucet and all that. That was a joint effort. If you look at the videos, and I'll put those videos in the description as well, uh, you can see how I did that, how I created the new uh, countertop. It's really and, pretty. I do like it. Yeah, it came out really well. Initially, Linda was like, that just looks like regular splatter paint. I don't think that's going to look mm. good at all. And then once I finished it she says wow that's a lot better than i thought it was gonna it's really pretty i really yeah. like it so pretty much everything else is done except for the flooring we already own the flooring we bought it what was yeah. it like two dollars a square foot yeah it was like two bucks a square foot and we we when we bought it we just said let's buy buy enough for the entire coach so we've already purchased that yeah and it's a luxury vinyl which yeah should be pretty nice waterproof um, yeah, yeah we definitely went with full waterproof so we don't have to worry about that 
But another thing, um, Dexter likes the carpet. <laughs> Poor guy. We've taken away his sofa. We we got a bed that's too small for him to lay on with us, and uh, we're gonna get rid of the carpeting. We put a little bit more money into it than we planned, right? But that's that's like anything. When that's you're, the plan, though. When you're remodeling a car, or you're getting a boat, and you're refurbishing an old boat. It always is a lot more than what you initially think it's gonna be. So. so, and I don't know if it's a lot more, but here's what it adds up to. After the first year, our expenses for the repairs and renovation are just over $9,000 of our $10,000 budget. However, there is still the battery install and the rest of the renovations that have to be completed. Understand that no RV is going to meet 100% of what you need to meet your financial situation or your camping style. You have to prioritize what's important to you. After everything we've done so far, would we do it again? Our first priority was built to last. We learned that 20 years ago, manufacturers like Holiday Rambler constructed a really solid coach. So that was one of the major decisions we made in choosing a motorhome. So with proper maintenance and care, the diesel engine that's in Rosie should go at least another two to 300,000 miles. And that was another top priority in the decision of choosing Rosie. Our second priority was that it fit our budget. So we set a budget, we stuck within it, we didn't want a loan, and even with the upgrades and the unexpected expenses that we've had, we've still managed to stay on target with that. Um, some things will just wait a little longer before we do them because we had some unexpected things, and that is what you have to expect with an RV. Right. You are going to have unexpected expenses. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Even the new ones. Yep. Our third priority was, can we see ourselves living in Rosie full time or at least months at a time? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. <laughs> She's got tons of storage. I could bring all my stuff. <laughs> Rosie's a keeper. She's part of the family now. She's not done though. There's more renovating to do and it's a labor of love. <laughs> you can learn more about Rosie's renovation by clicking on the link in the description below. To keep up to date with Rosie's progress, be sure to subscribe and share it with your friends. And we love comments and questions too. And make sure to give us a thumbs up.